It's been a while. What's going on guys? Nate with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment. Today we're going to be talking about another PC from Ace Magician, but this one is special because this one is specifically branded as a mini gaming PC. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to test this thing out. We're going to put it through the ringer. We're going to see if this can actually hold up and see what kind of performance we can get out of this. Now I should start this out by not saying that I believe that this is going to be as good as like my desktop PC or a dedicated gaming PC being that this is a mini gaming PC but I do have high hopes for this because the specs on this are actually pretty dang good. And you know for such a small form factor computer or just small form factor computers in general you always wonder how much performance can you really get out of something that is about the size of a book anyways. Well, in this computer, you are going to have an Intel i9-11900H with integrated graphics. So the integrated graphics processor is a part of their 11th gen core CPU for laptops, and that is going to be the G4. Now, I've looked at some benchmarks before this, and while they're not great, they're definitely going to be better than like an Intel UHD 620 integrated graphics processor. And on this mini mighty PC, you're also going to get 512 gigabytes of SSD storage space. You're going to get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and you're going to get 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Let's see how easy it is to upgrade this. All right, so I'm not going to lie. It took me entirely way too long to figure out how to open this. I was looking for tiny screws. Uh, there are none. All you have to do is simply pull down here up at the top, and just like that, you can see we got everything right here. Now, in terms of upgradability, you're going to have everything very easily accessible just straight up right here. I mean, if you want to upgrade the RAM, you can just take these out and upgrade them with faster speed RAMs. Or if you want to, you can also change out your M2 SSD right there if you want more capacity. But if you do really want to get into this and see how they have everything operating in here, you have screw holes. You can take that out and this whole bracket will come out and then you can see how everything's operating on the inside. But we're not going to do this review just to immediately upgrade this and see what performance we can squeeze out of it. We want to see what performance we get out of the box. But one thing we are going to do is we're going to take a look at this RAM, Juhor. Juhar. Juhar. Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't really know what that brand is. That's fine. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at this M2 SSD and let's see what brand they put in here. And to be honest, I understand it just dawned on me. I could just use software to figure that out, but that's no fun. And just a side note, if you guys don't have an electric precision screwdriver set, just get one. I promise you when you're doing stuff like this, it's going to be so much easier. All right, I stand corrected. We have the YHJCS3000. Okay. All right, so for I.O. on the back panel, you're going to notice that we have quite a few connections. We have dual HDMI connections. This should easily support 4K. This also is going to have two USB 3.0s. You're going to have your network interface card right here or your LAN port, and then you're going to have your power adapter right there. And then on the front right here, you're going to have an audio jack right here, 3.5. You're going to have two more USB 3.0s and a USB-C. But this right here is really what I'm interested in because you're going to have your power button right here. So you just push that in to enable power to this. But then you're also going to have this little rotary dial right here. And that's switching it between silent, auto, and performance. Maybe there's small fans in here that I can control over this knob, but we'll figure that out. So you remember that RGB I was talking about? It looks like this is going to come pre-installed with a software where we can control this. All right, so we got Cinebench R23 downloaded. Let's go ahead and run this, but first, performance mode. It changed red. Whoa. All right, let's go ahead and run multi-core, and we'll be right back. Oh, the powers of video editing. It's going to take 10 minutes for me, but for you guys, I'll be back in 3, 2, 1... And hey, just like that with the power of editing, you guys are back. Check this out. So this didn't do as good as I thought, but it definitely didn't do as bad as I thought. That, that doesn't make sense. We have a multi-core score of 6,132, which placed ninth on these behind processors like the i7-7700K, a Threadripper at 30,000 score, but that's actually pretty promising. And just for giggles, look at the performance we're actually getting out of Steam right now. We are downloading at about 30 megabytes per second solid. And that's pretty, I like, I like that. I like that. 
All right, so we launched into Dying Light 2 for our first game that we're going to test, just because it's not necessarily known to be a game that is going to have a ton of demanding graphics, but it still does look really good. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle. It's nothing too crazy, and it's also nothing that's just super easy like Minecraft or something. You see, if we zoom in, we have our frames per second meter right here, and it's just hovering right above 30. All right, so the benchmark is complete. You can see our results right over here. Our medium FPS is 22 frames per second, which in my opinion is basically just not playable. Minimum frames per second over here, we went down to 13, and our max frames per second was 36. Now that is still very impressive for a computer that is the size of a book. All right, so Dying Light 2 didn't do that good of a job, so I wanted to do something a little bit less graphically demanding, so we loaded up Raft right here. Now, Raft isn't a beautiful game, and it's not necessarily an 8-bit pixel game either, but the results that I'm getting with Raft are actually kind of disappointing because I'm currently just looking at the planks. There's really nothing going on on the screen except for the water in the background, and this is sitting on the absolute lowest setting, and I'm only getting anywhere from 19 to 22 frames per second, which any gamer is going to know that that's borderline unplayable. All right, so we are loaded up into Minecraft. I'll show you guys my graphic settings if I scroll down here to video. We're full screen. We're at an FOV of 85. Uh, we do have fancy leaves. We have beautiful skies on, smooth lighting. Um, now here is where I really wanted to kind of show you guys. Our render distance is set at only five chunks. And when we load into the game, it's not terribly smooth, but with just base Minecraft graphics, no RTX or something, I'm probably sitting somewhere around 40 frames per second. I don't have a frames per second counter built into this right now, um, but just from gaming over the years, I can tell this is sitting about 40 frames per second. Now, if we scroll up on that frames per second counter and we bring that to an average of 40 chunks, you're going to notice that we start really getting laggy on here for those of you guys that just need a powerful day-to-day -day usage computer i do really like the fact that they have rgb it does have good specs in it so it's definitely going to hold up well over the next couple of years in my opinion but in terms of raw gaming performance i'm not really seeing it and we even have this mode set to performance all the time now i did switch this on and off between performance and the other modes to see if maybe that would help and I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted. But for people that are just going to be playing very basic, you know, 16-bit or just side-scroller games or something along those lines, I think you guys would really enjoy this PC.